you know, one of the questions I have is one of my focus is going to be besides the real estate investment is uh, equipment financing and leasing. Uh -huh. And I was wondering if there's a separate application for for equipment. Um, so really, when you get into the equipment financing, uh, it's more based on financials. And then, of course, the the asset list, right, the equipment that they're looking for. So it really kind of falls more into the business funding realm. Um, initially, we just need our intake form filled out um, and we can gather the bits of information. Obviously, you want to get an asset list filled out with the equipment that they want. Um, and then there's it's just um, three months business bank account statements, that kind of thing. Right. Obviously, if there's if there's going to be invoices for the equipment they're looking to purchase or whatever, but treat it as business funding. Does that make sense? Uh, yes. Yeah. Another thing is somebody told me that you had a lot of experience in the equipment financing and I was just wanting to see if you have any words of wisdom. Uh, yes. Um, so <clears throat> obviously it depends. There, there's, I look at equipment financing in two ways. It's really one, they're either looking for financing to purchase equipment, but there's actually another way. And sometimes your clients can get a bit, can confuse the terms, the terminology, and that is trying to borrow money and using their existing equipment as collateral. And make sure you identify the differences between the two and what who you're actually talking to and what they actually want. So ask them that question outright. Are you looking for financing to purchase equipment or are you looking to utilize your existing equipment to borrow money? Very important because you can actually go down the road, down a rabbit hole with a client and realize that you're just completely off, not seeing the situation the same. Um, and, and not to worry, if you do end up with one of those clients that are actually looking for equipment, uh, or excuse me, are looking for money and using their existing equipment as collateral, you can help them. But if it's vehicles, they've got to be recent models, right? You're going to need VIN numbers. Um, if it's equipment, again, it's got to be recent, right? If they have giant machinery and tractors and ultra trailers and all these things, really it comes down to the lender. Can the lender sell those items, right? Um, and if they can sell those items, we're in good shape. But just because somebody, you know, I remember I had a client once um, who we were doing a bit of both. He was looking to purchase new equipment, but he was also looking to raise capital, leveraging his existing equipment. Right. And so it was a tough thing because as much the guy was at oil rigs, he was in Alaska. It was like he was all over the place. It was crazy. And he had all this crazy equipment. And he sent me this list. He literally was sending me pictures of gold nuggets, giant, big, fat gold nuggets. And I was like, this guy's insane. He's, he's, he's excavating gold. He's, he's pulling up oil out of the earth. He's doing all kinds of stuff. Look at this asset list. It was just pages and pages of tractors and oil rigs and all this stuff. And I thought, this is absolutely a deal. Why wouldn't it be a deal? It turns out it was extremely difficult to find somebody who is willing to take on that kind of risk because they have to resell that equipment in the case of default. And although the guy's financials look decent enough and he should be able to pay back on time. Anyway, I think you see where I'm, where I'm going with this. So um, as far as the bit different types of equipment, we do have a, a multitude of lenders that are willing to offer equipment financing. Um, and, and it can be, uh, we have low interest, we have higher interest. Obviously the higher interest, we get paid a little bit better. Uh, we can add a few more points to it or whatnot, but we do have you covered in, in that area. Um, so T Tracy, I know I'm going off in a few different directions here, but does that help you? No, no, it does help me. So back to using equipment as collateral. I mean, if it already has a UCC filing, is that probably not going to work as collateral? Yeah, lenders do de definitely do not want to take a second position on an asset, right? Um, they don't want to get in line because ultimately if the cl client defaults on one loan, then they default on another who's going to collect that on asset. The lender's going to work together in liquidating those assets. It's just... It's not going to happen kind of thing. You know, um, it's a little bit different in real estate where you have a property and there's significant equity um, and only a bit of that equity is tapped into as as collateral. You know, a lender may be willing to take a second position on that property. Right. Uh, but it depends. It, it's a it's a it's the kind of there's a lot of nuance there. It depends on, on really the situation, if that makes sense. OK. Uh, and with lenders, equipment lenders, I mean, most of my contacts are, are going to be in the agriculture sector. Uh, I'm sorry, can you repeat that? that? In the which uh, most of my guys are going to be in the agricultural. Agricultural, okay. Yeah, so there's a lot of lenders out there like Farm Ag, Ag Direct that offer, you know, some pretty uh, 
pretty low financing, you know, rates and terms and that sort of thing. And I was just wondering if we had, you know, lenders that can compete with those guys. We do. We do have some, some pretty low rates. Um, I did, you can't quote me because I don't have it up in front of me. And to be honest, real estate investment is really our, where a lot of our deals are. It's not that we don't have other capabilities. That's just where most of our students tend to, to, to aim for, right? Um, but I, I think we can get, you know, I think like a, a 11%, I think, and then you can get down into the single digits as well. But it's hard to, it's hard to give a rate uh, because, and, and this, you're going to encounter this with, with uh, your, your clients. Everybody wants a cookie cutter rate. They think, oh, he offers, he just said 11%. That means I'm going to get 11%. Well, not necessarily. You could get less than that. You could also get more than that. It really comes down to what you qualify for, right? And that's, that's the kicker. And uh, clients don't understand that. They think it's cookie cutter. They think everybody gets the same one size fits all kind of thing. And that's just not the case. Um, and and uh, we have a very large lender network. Um, so if we don't like the uh, pricing from one lender, we can go another. But we have very low risk lenders. We have very high risk lenders. And when I say that, we have lenders that are willing to look at high risk files and offer a high interest rate, right? We have lenders that are only willing to look at low risk files, but it's very, very, very reasonable pricing because there's not a lot of risk on it, right? So you're going to get that single digit interest rate. Does that make sense? Yes. Terrific. So we have you covered, not to worry, Tracy. We have a very large and vast uh, uh, nationwide lender network. Okay. All right. Thank you. You got it. Hey, Ryan. Yes. I wanted to ask you a question about what Tracy was talking about. Do you have lenders for... Um, leasing used equipment also lenders that would cash out uh can can lend against the used equipment so again it comes down to it comes down to whether or not the equipment is is uh resellable i mean if there's a resale value if they're because lenders are always thinking about default right and so can they sell that equip equipment right uh, is the bottom line um there's a lot of nuance here guys um and and so i think an easier answer would be if you have somebody who's looking to purchase equipment if you have somebody who's looking to use their equipment as collateral uh we the first thing we need is the asset list you know uh we need to take a look at it we need to send it over to our equipment guys and see can you do anything with this can you purchase that right can we use it as collateral and start there um, because you're, you're, you're opening up a can of worms sometimes, if that makes sense. So um, keep it simple in the beginning. Let's see what we're working with, and we'll, we'll take it from there, and we'll see what our options are, because we do have a variety of options. Well, semi-tractor trailers used still bring pretty good money. I mean, there's a lot of independent drivers that buy that equipment. Absolutely. No question about it. No question about it, Terry. But there's nuance there. The, the age yeah. of the vehicles. The, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Christopher. Do your thing. No, I was, I, I was just kind of because I think you're mixing up a couple of different things up um, there, Terry. So, yes. So a used tractor, a used trailer. Yeah, that does have value. Um, generally, lenders aren't lending you that. If they're selling a piece of equipment to another trucker, then that person we be able to apply for equipment financing to purchase that vehicle, depending on their their history, their credit report, their cash on hand. And so there would be a deal set up that way. Understand on trying to use farm equipment or agricultural equipment as collateral. The issue, as Ryan was alluding, is that, yes, it's already a used piece of equipment. And you have to understand how the lender has to think about any piece of equipment or collateral. They're not going to give you fair market value. They're going to go, if we had to liquidate this, how low will we have to sell this, pro this pr product if we had to liquidate it? Because they, they never sell for maximum dollar. They sell for liquidation. And so when they're pricing used equipment, they're pricing it and giving you a value based off of it had to be liquidated or it had to be a fire sale. So a lot of times you're not going to get a lot of money trying to use old equipment as a current asset, it, it, it really does get tricky. And so, I mean, as Ryan alluded to, you really got to put together the whole package, kind of look at it and see if there's any viable life um, life on it. So it's just kind of 
it's one of the worst questions for a hypothetical because there's a lot of different things that come into play. Yeah, I understand. They, they look at auction value. Mm. Mm -hmm. that's, that's how they uh, determine the value. What auctions are, what, what other equipment's bringing at auctions? So you're right. It, it's going to be low. I, I mean, but the thing about it is a lot of people, uh, a lot of business people go out and buy that equipment. For sure. Absolutely. They generally do a cash or they you or they do an MCA. Like, let's say I got an auction coming up and I know my company's doing $25,000, $30,000 of revenue. Is it advantageous for me now to maybe get an MCA loan, um, even though the rate's high to buy this piece of equipment in cash? Because having that piece of equipment is going to increase my R my return on investment by X. So if I'm buying more equipment, that's going to make, make me more money Then it doesn't, it, it's not a problem with me going with an MCA where I don't have to do a lot of qualifications um, to make it happen. I'm literally using what I'm making. I'm getting another asset and that asset's going to produce a dollar value, which should offset whatever money I borrowed. So again, that's more of how we would structure a deal. Once we saw the whole picture, um, that in itself, um, that in itself, though, can be a can of worms. And that, that really speaks to what Christopher, Christopher and I are trying to convey. Um, and that is, <clears throat> there's a lot of nuance here. For instance, you could have, you could explain to the client what Christopher just said, and the client thinks, oh, terrific. So now when I go and I go bid on a piece of equipment, you're just going to front me that money, and then I'm going to use that piece of equipment, and it's going to create money for me, and then I'm going to pay you back when I have the money. And that's not how a cash advance works. They're immediately going to get smacked over the head with a daily or a weekly payment. They're immediately going to be having to pay back that money. Right. And so if they don't have money coming in, they're just bleeding money. They're paying the lender back with the money that the lender gave them in the first place. So by the time they get to the profit zone where they can start paying back that money with the profit they made on that bit of equipment, they don't have much money left to use. Right. Or they certainly can't take that entire batch of money and throw it at the equipment they're looking to purchase because then they have no money to pay the loan back and they're going to default. And then they would lose that piece of equipment. So a lender is going to look for that kind of risk. And they're going to say, well, hold on a second. You don't have the liquidity and the cash flow to be able to afford that kind of money. Because if we give you that money and your use of funds is, is, is to do just that, purchase that equipment, well, then you have no money. And until, you know, if it's a farm, right, and the farmer is saying, well, you know, it's all about when I harvest the crop in six months. Well, we're not going to lend you money today and then wait six months for you to give us the money back. That's not how it works. You know, so there's again, there's a lot of nuance here and there's a rabbit hole you can go down if you're not careful. And so it's a tough hypothetical to answer. So we keep it simple in the beginning. Right. Fill out our intake form. Get our asset list filled out. Are you looking to purchase equipment? Do you need financing to purchase equipment? Or are you looking to use your existing equipment as collateral for a loan, right? Let's work our survey, right? Work your business funding survey. What type of business are you? Are you seasonal? What's the ownership look like? What does cash flow look like, right? Look back at the recordings of previous week's coaching calls over the last few weeks. We speak to these points and it can help you uh, understand. So anyway, good topic. Thank you, gentlemen, for bringing up equipment financing. I'm sure some others were thinking about that, but does that make sense, Terry? Yes, yes. Uh, one last thing. I mean, a lot of people on this call may not be familiar with it, but there's uh, sale leaseback. You guys do those too? Uh, you know, I, I have to look in, the, in my guidelines to be honest. I, I don't, we haven't done one recently. I can tell you that. So we'd have to take okay. a look, but we'd absolutely be happy to take a look at it. And uh, if we don't, it's just as easy as us setting up uh, an agreement with a, an ISO agreement with a new lender. Um, no lenders will say no to us. They, we, we've never had one turn us down. So we